And I'm now delighted to be joined by Tom Healy, who is an independent candidate here in the Carlow Kilkenny uh, gen general election. Uh, Tom, you've had a look at the tallies. How are you faring? Uh, disappointing result, uh, I'll be honest. Uh, so far, about half the boxes have been opened, uh, disproportionately more in the Carlow side of the constituency. Uh, so uh, I think it's looking that the government parties, the two major government parties have done uh, very well. Sinn Féin is doing very well as uh, it, it looks as if they're going to take a seat in Carlow Kilkenny. Um, from the point of view of independence, uh, it hasn't been exactly Independence Day. <laughs> no, no, un un unfortunately not. And when you were out uh, campaigning, so what were the big issues that were coming up on the doors when you were chatting to people? Yeah, I, I think um, t two issues in particular really struck me. One was obviously housing. That was a huge issue, uh, enormous frustration and anger, actually. Um, it, it, almost every house had an experience um, directly or indirectly of how it was impacting on people's lives. Uh, something as well I was very much aware of, but it, it, it did surprise me, the intensity of uh, frustration and, and anger about the lack of access to services for children with special needs. Mm. I mean, we, we know about this, of course, from... from uh, from a lot of sources, but but that was really coming across very strongly to me. Uh, parents in in anguish and and in very difficult situation, um, a, a, a generalised frustration and anger with the way things were in the country, um, whether on cost of living or the way migration was being managed or the issues, as I mentioned already, housing, healthcare came up, maybe not quite as much as I thought it would come up. But you know, the extraordinary thing, Paul, is that, um, and we have to fully respect the decisions and, and the, the will of the people mm. in a democracy. But the really surprising thing is I don't see that anger and frustration that I came across uh, translated mm. into what we're seeing, what's emerging here nationally and locally. Yeah. And I find that um, interesting, um, uh, disappointing, but, mm. but that is the way it is. It could be that there was uh, a feeling on the part of many people that um, that whatever their frustrations, that the alternative, whatever that might be, yeah, was exactly. was unsettling and and maybe people voted for stability, uh, at least better the um, the unsatisfactory situation uh, you know than the one you don't know. You know, and, yeah. And if we we're to look at the figures, I say across the country that. Mm. Fianna Fáil and Fine Gael will probably be mm. returned to government, maybe with a, with a new third third uh, mm. part mm. part of that co coalition. Um, do you see any of these issues that you've 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 discussed, um, like housing and mm. access to, yeah. to services for children with a, a spe yeah. special needs? Do you see any changes there um, in in the time ahead? Well, you'd have to hope that there will be some improvement uh, 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 for the better, but I, I do think that th there's a fundamental issue here with, um, a, 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 as I would see it, a lack of urgency around housing issues. And I, I was calling for the declaration of a housing emergency mm -hmm. as part of my own platform and campaign. But I think the, the storm clouds of economic uncertainty, the impact uh, from North America of recent political developments there, and the continuing uncertainty globally and the impact on, on prices of energy and food, I think any government uh, elected, um, any government formed in the next few weeks here in Ireland will have their work cut out for them. For sure. Mm. I'll hand you over to my colleague, uh, Paddy Manning. How are you, Tom? How are you? Fantastic, absolutely fantastic. I was admiring your social media campaign. Um, mm. You seem to cover a lot of ground. Where did you get to? What areas will you focus on? And how many were out? Because it's very difficult to canvas and campaign yeah. this yeah. massive constituency on your own. Um, it is, it is, yeah. No, we, we, we got out. I started early at the beginning of August. I knew that, that um, you know, there was a lot of ground to cover and um, I didn't have the same... Um, back up obviously as the bigger political parties uh, they have a lot of foot soldiers and financial resources so I got out early um, we covered uh, everywhere from Ferrybank to uh, to Tullow across to Ballyragget uh, down to Piltown so a lot of mileage there and uh, obviously we didn't cover every house uh, by by no means uh, even in, in built up areas we weren't able to, to reach everyone but um, through social media through local media as well I was able to reach a broad audience and um, I suppose I was really um, appealing to um, 
diverse constituencies, if I could put it this way, to people who knew me in the local areas that I'm, uh, where I'm involved uh, in, in community activism. Uh, that was certainly one source of, of support, and I think that is coming through in the tallies from what I've seen so far. Another constituency would be um, a pro-life uh, sort of constituency. It's a small vote, but it is, um, it is definitely there, and it's uh, not represented by too many political parties, to be honest. And at the same time, I was appealing to a broadly uh, left-of-centre vote. Now, that was a difficult horse to ride, if I could put it that way. And I knew that it was going to be difficult, you know, to keep that together because, um, uh, because of, uh, I suppose, quite frankly, uh, polarisation that has occurred globally, but also, I think, in Irish politics over many issues now that have become quite controversial and contentious. And uh, so... For me as an independent, um, a new uh, candidate in Carla Kilkenny coming into the fray, um, I knew it was going to be an uphill battle, yes, but um, but I have no regrets whatsoever that I stood. Um, I'm proud of what I did. I'm particularly proud that the pro-life campaign listed me as the most strongly pro-life candidate uh, out of the, I think it was five or six that were pro-life out of the 20 and all. That's an important issue for me and I, I'm immensely proud that I did that and that along with other people we had the courage to to put that point of view across in a compassionate and and evidence-based ba way but uh, obviously it's not going to be a huge vote winner and I as an economist I was also hugely focused on housing, cost of living, wages, equality, um, workers' rights, all those other issues. So I was crossing a lot of different areas for sure. Yeah. You didn't run in the local election. Um, do you think maybe it would have benefit of hindsight had you known you were going to run in the general? Um, you might put your name forward to increase your profile. Well, it would have helped if I'd ran, if only to, uh, yes, that, that is true, to, to increase the profile. But then I suppose... Um, uh, yeah, I, look, I, I think uh, <laughs> yeah, one campaign per year is probably enough, actually. So <laughs> I think that um, a lot of other candidates found it quite exhausting running two campaigns. It's it's exhausting financially as well as uh, as well as in every other way. So I, I think I, I think I paced myself actually. So I was I was probably right in in retrospect, but but uh, that's the way it turned out anyway. Yeah. And had you been elected to Dáil Éireann uh, mm. independent, like we saw. Not so much in recent years, but we've had kingmakers mm, in the, mm. uh, in independence. Um, yeah. What parties would you have negotiated with as an independent? Yeah, and what would have yeah. been your red line issues uh, yeah. to support the government? Yeah, yeah. Well, um, certainly the red line issues for me would have been housing, um, uh, special needs, uh, children, disability services. Uh, but also uh, I would be insisting that uh, anyone who wanted my vote to become a Taoiseach or form a government, uh, there would have to be no further development on the uh, proposed euthanasia laws and further liberalisation of abortion. And uh, we saw the vote yesterday in the British Parliament to a second reading of the euthanasia bill. Uh, so that's coming down the tracks here in Ireland. Those would have been some of the red lines that I would have had. And I would have... I suppose seeing myself as a critical, constructive voice because I, I believe strongly in working with people on specific issues and not excluding people just because of party allegiance or, or, or supposed political leanings. I believe strongly in a, in a politics of courage and hope and compassion. I know these are big words, but I, but I think that uh, a lot of the style of politics increasingly in Europe and here in Ireland, highly negative, personalised, quite toxic. That's not the way I do it. Yeah. And uh, uh, so anyway, that's to answer your question, had that, had that been the outcome? Yeah. Mm. Good answer. And I've asked every candidate, mm. who past or present is your biggest political influence? Who is my biggest political influence? That's a good question. <laughs> yeah, right now... It also seems to be a curveball because everyone has the same reaction. Yeah, yeah, in the in the current climate. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I, I'll honestly say no one in particular. I, I, I draw inspiration from different people on different issues. And this is one of the challenges I find with, uh, with politics uh, in, in the global context and here in Ireland, that actually um, there is such variation and uh, there are people that I would strongly agree with on certain 
issues, uh, but I would strongly disagree with them on other issues. So I, I'm, uh, I'm a person of conviction and strong belief, uh, but I like to think that I listen as well and try to understand where people are coming from. So I'm afraid there isn't any one. I mean, when I was a, uh, much younger than I am now, I thought that Noel Brown um, was a great person and Minister for Health and politician um, uh, and um, uh, he would have passed away, I suppose, uh, about 40 years ago now. I mean, looking back, the, I'm afraid there are no obvious heroes jumping out there <laughs> on the global scene, you know, and um, and I think we each have to find our own inspiration from, from multiple sources, yeah. Very and, fair answer. I'm going to yeah. pass you back to Paul now. Yeah. Well, Tom... Uh, We'd like to say thank you for taking the time to the talks us here on the Irish Political Road. We'd like to wish you well done on your campaign Thanks. and wish you every success for thank the future. You, You're Thank very you very welcome. Okay. Thanks for interviewing me.